All right, guys, I'm just gonna jump right into it. This is one of the most common questions I get about the particle photon, and that is, well, what's the difference between a particle photon and Arduino, or which is better, Arduino or particle photon? So the answer to that question is similar to the answer you give somebody when they ask you, well, which is better, a Honda Civic or a car? Because really, at the end of the day, a Honda Civic is a car, just like the particle photon is an Arduino, only much smaller and far more powerful than just Arduino as a regular, you know, broad Arduino. There are hundreds of varieties maybe at this point. There are definitely uh, in the tens, and I have a lot of them here that I play with on a regular basis. But this right here is the most common Arduino when people think of it. They say, oh, well, that's the Arduino. They recognize that. This guy right here is the Arduino Uno. Um, you're probably familiar with it if you are looking up this video. So this guy has female headers on top, power connector, a USB port, and, you know, several pins for various applications that you might have. And these have what are called shields that plug into here. Let me grab a shield really quickly. All right, so this is a popular shield right here. This is a Wi-Fi shield. There are shields that do all sorts of things, motor controllers, robots, uh, displays, you name it. And the shields kind of just plug in and they give you an added capability so that you can take your Arduino and you can add some kind of capability to it, whether that be an ethernet shield that connects you to, the, to an ethernet cable or a Wi-Fi shield that connects you to Wi-Fi or a cellular shield so you can send text messages. Um, and that is basically the Arduino platform that we all know and love. Now, I started with Arduino with this actual one right here in my hand. And this is the second, this is the first one that I ever bought, the first Arduino Uno. I bought a second one to roll out in a project I worked on, and I never bought another Arduino after that. I never bought another Uno. And the reason why was because I'd have to go out into the field and go retrieve this Arduino every time I wanted to push a software update to it. And that became really problematic for me because a lot of my software is, I, I develop it and I roll it out and I put it into place within a week and it will need to be tweaked. There are certain things that need to be tweaked. And a lot of what I work on is high reliability, meaning it has to be reliable. It has to have its own watchdog so that if a temperature probe fails, the device is smart enough to go into a safety mode to either keep the location warm or cool depending on where it is and what it's being used for. That's just one uh, example of what I mean by that. So anyway, the problem with this, one of the big problems for me was not being able to remotely push software updates to it. This combination right here with a, an Arduino with a Wi-Fi module or the Wi-Fi shield is a fantastic combination, but it's not for everybody. Now the particle photon, on the other hand, is basically both of these pieces of hardware in one plus a lot, plus a lot of capability. So let me show you what this guy looks like. This is the particle photon, um, originally known as the Spark Core. It wasn't this exact hardware, it was similar. You may have seen it before it became the particle photon. It was originally a company called Spark. They then changed their name to uh, Particle and their original platform was called the Core and they then changed the name to the Photon when the second generation came out, which is what this is here. Um, I actually still have some cores floating around, but that's neither here nor there. What we're talking about today is the Photon. So this is basically, if you were to take this right here, cram it into a beautiful little package, and give it a micro USB port, and gave it a little Wi-Fi chip antenna, and then, um, you, and then you add a cloud capability to it. So what's really cool about this is that this device when you, okay, so with a regular Arduino, you have the Arduino IDE, which is the development environment in which you would write your code. And then you would download some drivers and you would connect the Arduino to your computer and you would, you would write your code in the IDE and transfer it to the Arduino. And that sounds really complicated if you've never done it before, but it's actually very, very easy to do. So, but the problem there again is that that device has to be at your machine. Particle created this platform where you just go into a web browser, go to their website, open up the IDE in the website and push the flash and it sends it over the air, over the Wi-Fi, into the photon so you don't actually have to plug this into your computer, you just have to give it power. There's a little provisioning process that this goes through that connects to your iPhone or your Android to claim it to your account. Once it's claimed, that's it. Everything else is over the air. It's a beautiful platform. Now, if you don't really like the cloud or you don't rely on the cloud or you're worried that the internet's gonna go out and your coffee machine's gonna stop working, that's fine. You can actually disconnect it from the cloud right in software. Very first line, when it boots up, disconnect me from the cloud. Don't even try to connect. And it will actually operate just fine if you don't have any need to connect it to the cloud. So this is the particle photon. That's it. And it has 
um, a set of pins on the bottom. They offer a few different shields of their own at, at um, Particle. This is one of them here. I use this a lot. Almost, almost every time I use a photon, I use this shield. This is a four relay output shield. Um, and it has a little like breadboard section here that you can solder. I have a little uh, terminal block in here and a pull-up resistor. This is hooked to a temperature probe. Uh, this particular board is very powerful uh, because it does give you dry contact outputs with some NCs and some NOs. So, um, and you know, you just give it a wide range of power, 7 to 20 volts DC, and that will power it up through here. This has the regulator on it. Don't, don't apply that directly here. As far as which one I recommend, it really depends on what you're working on, what your experience is, and what you need to do with it. I mean, this does, the, the regular Arduino platform does have a couple uh, pinouts that might be useful. Maybe there's a shield that's available for you for this that's not available for the Photon, so it would take you a little bit of time to wire it up and, and make an adapter shield. Or you could probably, uh, I think they have a shield shield that you can plug this in that would make it so that it works with other Arduino shields. But it really does depend on what you're doing. And just have a look at uh, SparkFun, Adafruit. Just go online, go to ncd.io and see what they offer. You'll find that um, there are quite a few shields available. And here you go, one more time, just for uh, comparison's sake, the size difference is perhaps important in your project. Um, but... I recommend to everybody who comes to me now and says, what, which one should I start with? I always do recommend the Particle Photon. I'm not affiliated with Particle. I just tell them that because um, it's, it's just simple to get started. Um, and it also has a couple onboard LEDs, so you actually don't even have to use it. If you want to see your code work, you can just flash your code and, and start blinking the LEDs on it rather than having to wire anything on a breadboard, which is another intimidating factor for a lot of people who are getting into this because now you have to learn some code. Maybe there's a little bit of electrical engineering involved so you don't burn out your LEDs or that so that they actually illuminate if you have the, you know, the wrong voltage. You don't have to deal with any of that because there's onboard LEDs for you. There's actually a really cool onboard RGB LED on here that when you connect it to power, it... Um, it tells you what state the device is in. So it tells you if it's right, trying to provision, you know, if it's flashing blue, then it's waiting to be provisioned. If it's breathing cyan, then it's, um, it's connected to the cloud. If it's blinking cyan, it's trying to connect to the cloud. It has a whole, you can go on the website and check it out. So it really is uh, a great platform to get started with. So I hope that answers your questions. And if you have any more questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments below. I'll try to help as many people as I can get started with this stuff because the more people involved, the merrier. And I want as many people to be as creative and as fulfilled as possible. So I'll see you guys in the next one.